From the Byzantines to the end of the 13th century. In this video, we are going to be discussing the flute's history from about 1000 AD to about the year 1300. In this video, as well as the next video, we will be mostly tracking the westward movement of the transverse flute from the Byzantine Empire. This was a time when art and culture in the Byzantine Empire was being taken up by the Western Europeans in many aspects. Unfortunately, no flutes from this time exist. However, there are places in art and in a few writings where the transverse flute is depicted or mentioned. It wouldn't be until hundreds of years later that people could generally read and write making the information from the medieval period rather sparse. The same goes for the medieval music. They just didn't generally write it down. There is some written music from this time period, but are often left without any instructions. So we have almost no idea on how to perform them. Once again, just because a piece may call for a flute, do they mean the block flute, also known as the recorder? or some other whistle-type instrument, maybe? We do know that compared to other instruments like fiddles or harps, the flute is depicted far less in medieval art. In the early Middle Ages, the transverse flute is depicted with the putative organ, or hurdy-gurdy. This leads one to believe that the transverse flute was not among the most common instruments. This really is the beginning of the transverse flute coming into Europe. And of course the idea of flutist being shepherd spreads with the transverse flute. Take for example, an early 11th century collection of sermons from St. Gregory of Nazians, a 4th century Archbishop of Constantinople, in which a flutist holding his instrument to the left is portrayed. This image is found with the Easter sermon. It wouldn't be until the 12th century that we find this image, the flute and other instruments being associated with a certain pagan myth. We see very clearly how the sirens are lulling the sailors to sleep at first with their music, then in the next part, they attack. The moral of the story being, don't fall victim to earthly temptations. This image comes from a collection of sermons and other religious writings of Benedictine Abbess Herod von Landsberg, of Hohenberg, St. Odile, and Alsatia. In the late 13th century, we can conclude the flute was being used outside Germany. The first literary reference was in 1285 in a French literary set piece. But the real gem in the 13th century comes to us from the Cantigas de Santa Maria, which we have been listening to a portion of. We've been listening to it being sung, but it is also perhaps the first written music intended for the flute. Along with the music are various illustrations. The depictions of the flutist you see here particularly stand out because of their ties to Arabic and European musical cultures. In the Contigas, other countries are mentioned. This is important because it gives us a glimpse into instrumental practices throughout all of Europe. It is also clear by the late 13th century, solemnization was used by instrumentalists. This means that a note name indicates a position in a scale rather than the absolute pitch. Also, they didn't have the same tuning system that we universally use today. They most likely worked with a sort of Pythagorean tuning, in which the fourths and fifths are pure. This means that a flutist may have had several different flutes with all different sorts of fingerings for different tuning situations. Tuning would not only perhaps differ in one town, but also from town to town a trend that isn't standardized for hundreds of years. In the next video, among other things, we will be discussing the continued westward movement of the flute and how the flute was used as a military instrument, a trend that starts in the 14th century.